the name of the one who loves us, the one who saves us, and the one who spurs us ever on. Amen. Please be seated. Are there any children here that would like to come up front to talk about our readings today? I know I can hear you. Come on up. Come on up. There we go. Look at you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Wow. Well, well, I have some questions for you. We just heard a story about a man named Nicodemus. And he came to see Jesus at night. It was dark. Any of you afraid of the dark? Kind of, yeah. Why, why do you think you're afraid of the dark? You believe in monsters, yeah. Yeah, because you can't see anything. And, and when we're in the dark, we can't be seen, can we? Can't. So this man, Nicodemus, came to see Jesus when it was dark. Yeah, so do you think he could be seen by anybody? No, that's right. That's why he went at dark, so that nobody would know that he was going to see Jesus. But he had lots of questions for Jesus. Do you have any questions for Jesus? No, not today. Do you have any questions for Jesus? He had lots of them. And you know what? Sometimes grown-ups have lots of questions for Jesus. Not like you guys, who just put your trust in him, knowing that Jesus always loves you. But Jesus gave a very special message. Awesome. Yeah, Jesus is awesome. Yes, keep going. For the Bible tells me so clear. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Wow, well done. Well done, Mom and Dad. Excellent. Excellent. But you know what Jesus tells this man, Nicodemus, who comes to see him? He tells him that he came for the entire world so that all who believe in him have eternal life. That's the promise that Jesus makes to us. He will always be with us. And when we believe in him, even at that time when we die, our life changes. Like butterflies. Yeah. Like that. That's right. In that picture, those stained glass windows. So always know, friends, that Jesus will always love you no matter what. All right. You go back to your mom and dad. Thank you. What faith. What faith. Well, this past weekend... I had the privilege of spending time with our vestry as we learned a new model of how we understand the core purpose of Christian community. Our gathering was facilitated by our canon for congregational development, Christopher Lynn Payne, and he introduced to us this model that comes from the College of Congregational Development. And it's called Gather, Transform, Send. That's our purpose. And it describes the process and practice of belonging to a faith community that will renew and change us, turning our hearts towards Christ and transforming our lives more and more into an extension of God's love that we can then bring into the world as we are sent into our various contexts of family life, work, society, and civil life, and the church, the love of God. 
And what struck me about this model as a lens for understanding congregational life is that the transforming love and action of God in Jesus are at its heart as we are called to be expressions as the body of Christ. And in this morning's gospel from John, we catch a glimpse of this transforming action taking place in the character of Nicodemus. Nicodemus isn't a main character like the disciples, like Peter, like Paul. He's kind of a bit player. But he appears at several times in John's gospel. And in that, we see his transformation unfolding. In the verses that we just heard, Nicodemus emerges from the darkness to seek out the light of Christ. He's self-confident, though he does come in the dark. He is a leader in his religious community. He's a Pharisee, we heard. But he's spiritually open, curious, rational. And he does approach Jesus directly, although somewhat cautiously coming at night. But we don't hear him judging Jesus' actions See him seeking understanding. And he begins by addressing Jesus as rabbi, honoring him with a title reserved for those who are knowledgeable about Torah or who are master teachers. And he also recognizes Jesus' signs and good works as the manifestation of his special relationship with God. And he wants to know what Jesus is all about. I believe it is after this encounter that the transformation begins. Because we see him again near the end of chapter 7, when Nicodemus, while not exactly standing up for Jesus, nevertheless reminds his colleagues, his fellow Pharisees, that according to the law, they should not judge Jesus before giving him a trial. And for offering them, he is in fact then he makes this time after Jesus' crucifixion by the Roman authorities when Nicodemus accompanies Joseph of Arimathea to collect, to anoint, and to bury the body of Jesus. And by his actions. Nicodemus declares this allegiance to the one who had just been executed for a capital offense. Not very safe or smart. And that's what I think makes Nicodemus such an interesting character. He's the only bit player, as far as I can tell, who shows up at multiple points and grows in his faith. He first brings questions and is confused. He later invites others to be slow in their judgment, and he finally risks publicly, publicly dishonor, standing up and burying the one that was just executed. The other thing about Nicodemus is that his transformation doesn't happen instantaneously. It takes place over time. Indeed, his journey with Jesus continues across most of the Gospel of John, might assume beyond. And that, I think, is indeed good news for me, and I hope for you. Because Nicodemus shows us that transformation doesn't have to happen overnight. We each have our own path. That is okay. That God moves through individuals and communities in ways that can be expected but are also surprising. For some of us, this transformation might be easy, fast, and strong, with little doubt. Thanks be to God for that. But for others, maybe most of us, this faith that transforms our lives comes more in fits and starts. Two steps forward and another back. More like a cha-cha-cha. 
or perhaps at times things seem clear and at others they're just confusing. Or maybe it feels a lot more like an endless series of questions. But hearing Nicodemus' story once again gives me hope that all of us, no matter where we are on our journey of faith, can be transformed by Nicodemus is the patient of curiosity. I think I'd also like to claim him as the patron saint of all those of us with a restless faith, longing for transformation, yet aren't satisfied with easy answers. Even more, though, I think this story says a lot not simply about Nicodemus, but also about God, that God is patient. God doesn't give up. God never rejects what he claims as his own. And if God keeps working in and on and through Nicodemus across three years and 16 chapters in John's Gospel, God will keep working in, on, and through each one of us. No matter how long it takes, especially if we keep at it, exploring our challenges and strengths openly, honestly, more than just a little humility. You know, as your leadership, your vestry, continues to engage with gather, transform, send, all of you will be invited into this process of understanding our purpose. We're going to be asked questions. Then we're going to gather and talk about what we have learned. And it is my hope that we, like Nicodemus, who on one dark night fired with love's urgent longings, as St. John of the Cross describes, can be transformed by encounters with the living God in our midst and bring that transforming love to the world. Now, after Jesus' death, we don't hear of Nicodemus again. Whether he became a seeker, a follower, a disciple of Jesus. But we do know, as he held the body, crucified Christ, at his burial, gently anointed him. This act of love shows that Nicodemus was in fact changed, was transformed by a night visit to Jesus, who is the light of the world. You know, a story is told about a farmer who was bringing wheat to town with his donkey and his cart. And alongside him came an itinerant Christian preacher. And the preacher said to this farmer, Brother, are you saved? He asked this very earnestly. The farmer thought about it for a minute and said, Well, that's a good question. But I don't know if I'm the best person to ask really know the answer, you should probably ask the miller and the shopkeeper and my wife and our children, those who come to work on my farm, and that man who was just passing through that stayed with us last month. They would probably have a truer answer than I would. The preacher, unsure of what to make of this answer, those that surrounded you were asked, are you saved? Are you a believer? Are you a Christian? In the weeks and months ahead, friends, we continue to work with this process of taking a look at our purpose. It's my hope and prayer that each of us and those who will become part of this unique and vibrant community that is St. John's will join in our common call to become a site of God's transforming love and to continue the work that we're already doing, where we encounter the light of Christ, transformed to be light for the world.